Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So today I have got five Photoshop tips that are guaranteed to maybe make you a better artist. Let's get into it. So I'm going to show a few really quick techniques uh, around the color picker. So you probably know if you click I on the keyboard, it will bring up the color picker. And if you click down, you can choose any color you want. But then you have to click B to go back to brush. Now this is a technique I've been using for years and it's not the best option. If you hold down Alt, that will also bring up the color picker. And then when you let go, it's gonna go straight back to the brush. So that is the faster way to do it. Now something I didn't know is let's say I want to choose a color that's not already on my page. Well, I can go up here and choose it that way. But there is actually a faster route if you hold down shift alt and then right click it will bring up the color picker box and you can choose any color you want you do have to hold down your right click button which is a little bit annoying uh, but i imagine you get used to that really quickly now this is something i haven't used yet but i'm going to try to because it does seem like a faster process something else fun little um, trick i found out recently i usually use the bracket keys to make my brush bigger or smaller and you can hold down the bracket key to do it quite quickly um, but again, there is a faster route. If you hold down Alt and then right click, uh, dragging left and right will make the brush larger or smaller and dragging up and, up and down will adjust the hardness. Now, depending on what brush you have, depending on the settings, it may also reduce the opacity rather than the hardness. But again, that is a really quick way to change your brush settings. So here I've got the standard brush. I can lay down this purple color. Now let's say I want a slightly more saturated version, shift, alt, right click. I can go across to a more saturated version. And now let's say I want it to be less hard. You can see it's a very hard brush. If I hold down alt, right click, and I go up, it's gonna be softer. There you go. So as you can see, with just a couple of buttons, really quick process and you don't have to leave your canvas. So with this technique, I'm gonna show you how you can use the history panel to essentially paint in any action you can do in Photoshop. So to begin with, you need the history panel open. You can see I've got a JPEG here of my work and all I've done is opened it. I haven't touched the image at all. If you can't see history, you need to go to window and then you'll see it there, history. You can see the little tick, that means it is showing. And now I can basically use the action. So anything I use in here, is going to add into this list, okay? So to begin with, I'm just gonna show you a really quick um, vibrant, removing saturation, just so you can see a visible difference. It doesn't really matter what I'm doing at this point. I'm gonna merge that down. You can see now all of those actions are now in my history. If I click the little box to the left, you can see a brush icon appears. That basically means my history brush is now gonna be using this information from this last action and apply it. If I click open, that's where it's going to apply it to. So it's taking the information from merge down and it's applying it to open. The history brush down the left hand side, that's the one you wanna grab and you can choose any brush you want. That's why this is so useful. And you can see if I now use that brush here, it is applying that grayscale layer. I'm gonna delete those, uh, just get rid of these here go back to my original. And I'm gonna do a few more because obviously it's not just grayscale. So let's say we want to do color balance. So I'm gonna adjust this kind of crazy. Um, it's not gonna look great, but there you go. Something that just looks a bit different from what I had already. Gonna blow out some colors. Yep, something like that's pretty cool. And then I'm gonna to go to curves going to adjust the contrast maybe something like that and then I'm also going to let's go hue and saturation and see what that does see if there's anything cool in here man that's pretty crazy let's go with that okay and I'm going to merge all of those down just so I've got a JPEG and what I'm going to do is do the same thing again click that brush icon go back to open go back to my original and I'm going to change the brush to a soft round and I'm gonna paint it in where I think it's useful. You can undo it, um, you can adjust the pressure the same way you would with a normal brush. And you can see you can start to paint this in where you want it. And I've done this really quickly, obviously that any tool you wanna to use, you can use filters. Uh, it doesn't have to be adjustment layers down the right hand side, it can be absolutely anything. And there you go. 
and if you like it you can keep it and if you don't like it you can just go up here go back to your original image and then again if I like it I can just jump back onto it actually it would have been that one there wouldn't it so there you go hopefully that's useful um, you have to use your imagination a little bit to imagine what you're going to use it for but I think it's a really great tool that I personally don't use enough this next one may seem a little bit boring to begin with, but stay with me. It's a really useful skill to know how to do. What we're going to do is export uh, different layers of a PST document into a folder. Now you can just go file, save as, but if you've got 100 layers, it can take forever. Now this might be a situation where you're looking for sprites for a game. It might be when you just need the layering to send to a client because they've asked for them and you don't want to save out every layer. So what we're going to start with, you can see my PSD here, you're going to want that saved in a folder. So I've got Gollum and then just uh, version one PSD. Basically, you're going to need to know where it is. And then I've got um, a couple of layers. So I've got the original JPEG there, and then I've cut out a few different versions really poorly just to use for this example. Okay. Now what you're going to do is go to file, generate image assets. Now, if there's a tick already there, you don't need to click it. It means it's already on. As you can see from our folder, nothing has happened. But if I click the name for original, double click it and change the name to .jpg for JPEG, it's going to create a folder in here, double click that, and then I've got my original JPEG. Do it to the forearm, .jpg, click enter, and there we go, we have a JPEG. Now this can be really quick, it's much faster than saving them out, but as you can tell, this has a white background because it's a JPEG, we don't want that. I want a transparent background so I can move it around. Potentially a 3D model modeler can use this to texture. So .png is the standard file type for a transparency. And if I open that now, as you can see, it's terribly cut out, but it is transparent. So I would go and do that across every layer, just rename .png. But it doesn't stop there. Um, it's got a lot of functionality. I'm not gonna go into all of it. I'm just gonna show one more. If you want to know more, then it's worth you going onto the Adobe's website and just look for the uh, image assets and just see what you want. And what I'm gonna call this is small.jpg and I'm gonna type 50% and click enter. Now, as you can see, there's now a JPEG in there called small and obviously it could be called anything you want. But the 50% after the JPEG is really important. You could also just do five, exactly the same result. Uh, if you look at the file size, um, 398, that one is 1.32 meg, so it's a lot smaller. Now obviously you can do 60%, 120%, whatever you think is useful. And that's it, really great if you've got 100 layers, the fastest way to get all of your um, images separated into a folder. This next tip is gonna be based around the crop tool. Now let's say you've created this beautiful image, which has been done by this amazing artist, I'm gonna put the name up on the screen, and the art director turns around and says, oh, we want the horizon line to be straight. Well, you want to make the adjustment for yourself, whatever the reason, there's a really quick way to do it. Now, obviously you can either go up here to crop and you can rotate and you can try and line it up the best you can. And then potentially just click um, enter and you might work out okay, but there is a faster route. So I'm going to undo that. There we go. Now what you want to do is click C or go up there to choose it, but C is the shortcut. Hold down control and then draw a line along your horizon line. So the horizon line's about there. Let go, click enter. Okay, there you go. That straightened out the composition perfectly. As you can see though, we have this clipping there. So we've straightened out the composition, but annoyingly you've lost some of the work. Now you can paint that in, but there is a, again a faster way to do it. Click C to bring up crop. And up top, you can see there is a selection called content aware. Turn that on, hold down control, click and drag for your horizon line, let go. Click enter. Now it's gonna take a few seconds, but it's gonna do some Photoshop magicry and replace um, the pixels surround it that are missing with similar pixels. So hopefully, fingers crossed this will work. There you go, and that's done a pretty good job. Over on the right hand side, uh, pretty much can leave that as it is. The left hand side, you might want to do some edits, but it's better than starting from scratch. So that is a few techniques you can use using the crop tool. I am now going to explain what the difference is between opacity over here on the right hand side on the layer panel and fill. For years I've not known and I've recently found out and it's pretty cool. So I'm going to draw um, a lovely blob 
on a beautiful sergeant painting. And if I reduce the opacity, it does exactly what you imagine it will do. It reduces the opacity. If I reduce the fill, it does exactly the same thing, literally exactly the same thing. So for years I've done that and I've not really known what the difference is and I could never be bothered to work out. But what I can do now, I'm going to add a stroke and it's going to be a horrendous red stroke apparently. And I'm also going to add a drop shadow because why not? There you go, that's there. Again, if I reduce opacity, everything is going to reduce. If I reduce fill, just the green in the center is going to reduce. The stroke and the drop shadow are still there. You can see I can turn them off, but they are still there. What's happening is the opacity adjusts everything in the layer, whereas the fill just adjusts the original layer. It doesn't affect any adjustments you make. So that can be really useful if you're creating text or objects and you want a border or something like that, I'm not sure. Um, but it is still useful, but there is more to it. So if I get rid of that, create a new layer. Um, in your layer choices here, um, I believe there are eight of them that react this way using fill. I'm gonna show you color dodge. So I'm going to create a, I'm gonna use a soft brush, first of all. And I've always wondered what Sargent's work looks like with more color dodge. I uh, personally think it needs a bit of color dodge, don't you? So I'm gonna add that in. There we go. I am joking, by the way, for any uh, people that are just about to hate on me in the comments, Sargent's work is pretty much perfect. Now that looks pretty horrendous. If I reduce the opacity, it does exactly what you imagine. It reduces the opacity. It starts to lose the effect of why you would use color dodge in the first place. It becomes a bit washed out, kind of pointless. If you reduce the fill, you can start to see it interacts with the layer underneath. Now in this example, it's creating this kind of shine, almost uh, silk-like texture. Now obviously this is an extreme, you wouldn't want to do this to this painting, but if you're working on sunsets, lighting effects, rim lights on people, this can be really useful. If you want to know more about which modes work, um, just Google it essentially and work out layer modes that work with the fill function and it will bring up what you're looking for. Play around with it because you can get some really great results. Thank you guys for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to see future content. I have a Discord group as well, that will be in the description below. So if you want to speak to me and other artists, that is the place to do it. And it's absolutely free, so why not? And thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.